Hey everybody, I want to ask you a question. Do you have a true friend? By that I mean, do you have someone with whom you are 100% open with, just as you are with yourself? If so, that's incredible. This video is not for you, but please, before you go, if you can share your secrets with the rest of us down below, that would be amazing. But if, like me, your answer is no, then you probably sometimes find it challenging to understand the complexities of relationships and you struggle to find this true bond that hopefully will elevate your life and won't make maintaining a relationship feel like a chore. Maybe you have some people in your life that you call them friends, but in your heart of hearts you know that it's not a good relationship. You omit some information, you make excuses, sometimes you even lie. And yeah, you know that this is not what you actually want or desire from life. Seneca tells us that if that's the case, then the problem or the reason why we haven't found this true bond yet is rooted in our poor choices. He encourages us to choose our friendships carefully and commit entirely to those friendships which we choose. And he says, when friendship is settled, you must trust. Before friendship is formed, you must pass judgment. Now, I've been doing the complete opposite. I always joke around that when I meet new people, I give them my full 100% trust and it's theirs to lose. And I was proud of it and there's nothing to be proud of because there are so many problems with that. First, it's not fair to put so much weight on someone who didn't ask for it. And second, I set myself up for heartache every single time because my expectation of the relationship is unreal and too high. And finally, I expect things from people that maybe are not reasonable to expect from these certain people. So I think Seneca's advice is on point. And when we find someone who has the potential to become a good friend, we should observe and see if their values and virtues are similar to ours and if we have some compatibility and if we decide to go for it then we should go in wholeheartedly and understand that yes yeah, sometimes maintaining the relationship will be challenging but if we stay true and open and loyal and respect one another then these challenges won't feel as challenges and, and even if they do it will be worth it then when we make a choice Seneca reminds us that what you expect of people, they seldom disappoint. So if we regard our friends as loyal, they will be loyal to us. But if we don't trust them and we're suspicious, we will teach them to deceive us. It reminded me of the dependency paradox, which means that the more secure you are in a relationship, the more independent you are. So for example, if a child feels secure in their relationship with their caregiver, they're more likely to play far away from them and be more independent. But if the attachment is insecure, then the child will probably stay close to their caregiver and cling to them. So here too, if we don't trust our friends and make sure that they feel comfortable to trust us, then we are creating an unhealthy bond. Seneca also divided us into two classes. One class is people that automatically share everything with people they've just met. They share things that maybe should be shared only with close friends, but they share it publicly with whoever is listening. That's me. <laughs> the second class is people that don't trust anyone. They don't share anything. They can barely trust themselves with their own secrets and they will probably take their secrets with them to the grave. Now, both classes are equally wrong. It's bad to trust everyone and to trust no one. So it's important to find this medium between these two extremes. Now, I'm curious which class you see yourself fitting more into. So please let me know because I'd love to get to know you better.
So finally, Seneca tells us to avoid these kind of people and also avoid being the following kinds of people. Those who always lack repose and those who are always in repose. So those who lack repose are people that are addicted to action. They're always in motion. They always want to do something and to see something. They're kind of addicted to the hustle of bustle of our lives. And that points to their restless minds. But those who are always in repose, which I see myself fitting more into this category, They see motion and movement and action to be a vexation. He shares a saying of one of his contemporaries, Pomponius, that says, Some men shrink into dark corners to such a degree that they see darkly by day. I love this one. So basically his advice here is to find a nice place in the gray area and avoid the extreme ends of these axes. I also like how he ended this letter. He says, discuss this problem with nature. She will tell you that she has created both day and night. And with that, I'll let you go. I hope you took something out of it and that it was interesting and I'll see you next time. Bye.